This week, the pursuit of creativity brought me to filmmaker Jack Cook. In addition to filming content for huge brands around the country, Jack has been daily vlogging on TikTok for over 500 days. If you've ever tried to make a vlog, you know this is no small feat. In this episode, we talk about how having a personal creative outlet is super important, what it's like to live and work in LA, and how having a strong creative support system is essential for working for yourself. My name is Ike Ajivan, and welcome to the Pursuit of Creativity podcast. Jack, I am so stoked to be having this conversation with you. I've been following your TikTok for a while now, um, and to see all of the things that you're doing, all the cool videography stuff, I'm so stoked to have my audience get a taste of that as well. So, Jack, if you could give us a little intro to yourself, like where you're at, where do you live, how old you are, and a synopsis of your job. Okay. An elevator pitch, if you will. Yes. (laughs) Okay. So, my name is Jack Cook. I currently live in Los Angeles, California. I've been living here for like two and a half years. Um, And since I moved out here, I've been doing freelance videography, anything from director to PA to everything in between. And in the more recent times, I have been doing a daily vlog on TikTok. It kind of showcases the behind the scenes of my work and what I do. Um, And I've been doing that for almost 500 days straight now. 500 days straight. 500 days of Jack. I like that. We're on 491, I think. So closing in on 500. That is, that is literally like astonishing and amazing. And a round of applause for that. Um, But we'll come back to that because I do want to start with more of the videography part of, of, of Jack Cook. So um, could you just let me know and and our listeners know like how you got started like did you go to school for videography did you is it just like a passion that's grown into like your full-time thing yeah i started making videos when i was pretty young like i was like 12 and had a camera and liked making videos i didn't take it seriously until i was 18 i made a youtube video with a drone because i had a drone and i was just filming a bunch of stuff in my hometown i made a youtube video out of it and i was like i like I liked doing this more than I've liked doing anything ever in my Mm -hmm. life. This is the most fun I've had doing a thing before. And it was a very like real realization. So once that happened, I uh, decided I wanted to do filmmaking full time, figure out like how to make it a job. That was right before my senior year in high school. I graduated high school and I went to Auburn University. I started shooting sports there. So I was filming Mm -hmm. like the football teams, basketball teams. Um, And that was where I really like took my first leap in terms of like really learning about video, really learning what it means to tell a story. And then by the time I got to graduating college, I had a few years of experience doing video like professionally, I guess, under my belt. And I was like, well, you know, I want this to be my career. And so I decided like L.A. was the place that like that could potentially happen. So I moved here in June of 2020 and didn't have a job when I moved here. I didn't really know anyone. So I just started sending cold emails to anyone and everyone yeah. that was related to film in LA and just was like, I will grab your coffee for you. I will do anything that you need me to do. I just want some experience. And um, it took me like three months, but eventually I started to find some work. And since then, it's just been like a slow snowball effect. That is really, really cool. I, I admire the grind. Um, or whatever you want to call it, people. I don't feel like people don't love that word anymore, but to go out no, there. No, it takes and, a while, you know, though. Yeah. yeah. But once you start, it's like takes years to even get to the point where you feel like you're familiar with the craft. Totally. Um, could you, based uh, just based on what you're just saying, like, could you describe one of your first jobs when you first got to LA versus a job that you've had recently? Like, what did you do then versus like how you've like evolved it to, to now? When I first moved here, I was doing a lot of, um, I was doing work with like a lot of production company and I was filming a lot of like YouTube style videos. Like I was more wrapped into the social media world. So I was actually making all of uh, the D'Amelio's YouTube videos. So oh, like Charlie. Wow. See, I was making like, I was shooting and editing um, most of their videos for a production company that like that was uh, their main client. So I was doing a lot of that style of work. And at that time, most of the style of work I was doing was I was contracted under a production company or an agency to do work for the then 
client or brand or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. The biggest difference for me now is I've gotten to a point where the brand is coming directly to me or I'm working in tandem with an agency to work with a brand as like yeah. the agency is a little bit more of a representative, not as much like contracting me out for a specific role. So I think that's been like the biggest jump I've had in my career is sort of like breaking out of the breaking out of that cycle. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense for those who like I have a good idea of what like the benefits are of doing it directly with the brand or versus going through a middleman. But could you just explain like for those who don't know, like why that's important to kind of have your own thing as well? I would say first big thing is like financially, it's like a big jump to get like working directly with the brands or working directly with agencies. Like there's a budget for a project that typically comes from a brand or a client that budget then gets allotted to either a production company or an agency. And then sometimes it goes through another hoop. And then where I was at was I was then getting a piece of the budget that was getting pieced through the production company, you know, so there's, there's just a lot more steps of that you have to go through if you're like on set as a PA or on set as a camera operator. Um, it's, a, I think it's a little bit tougher to like make a sustainable living. Like you have to have like a high yeah. volume of work and mm -hmm. now what I'm doing now working directly with agencies or working directly with brands is I can take on less projects um, and actually make a little bit more money, which allows me to be a little bit more selective with my work. Totally. And when you get to be selective with your work, you get to like, you get to choose things that you're actually really passionate about and it allows you to like pour more into those projects. No, that makes a ton of sense. I think, I feel like that's like the, the constant struggle for entrepreneurs or like creative types there always like trying to balance between I need work I need to get this like stuff to pay the bills and also oh but I'd like to do this more or I'd like to choose this more um totally. so could you describe like an ideal client um or if you have a client you can talk about <laughs> maybe not but uh, someone that like a, a type of client that you enjoy working with I would say the first one that comes to mind is uh Zila they're a like protein supplement company um, and the founders, his name is Ilya. And so I have like a pretty good relationship with Ilya. And I've recently done two documentaries with him um, where we take, not we, he takes somebody through a weight loss journey and mm -hmm. we document uh, that process and like sort of make a documentary out of that. So I think that in and of itself, like I... When I look for a client, I'm also, I'm looking for like, what is the work that they're offering for me? And doing like a documentary about a weight loss journey is like a fun project in and of itself. Totally. Um, and also they have budget to, that they can actually allocate to the project. So I think when you have both, when you have a client that can actually bring in a budget to make a video and they also have like an idea that is exciting i think like that's the type of thing that i look for yeah no that makes a lot of sense is this the documentary that you reference in your vlogs i was gonna ask yes. about that yeah it is? okay <laughs> i referenced it quite frequently so it was recently was uh her name's natalie she was going through weight loss journey and so we'd been documenting it since like gosh i don't know september maybe maybe even mm -hmm. before that probably before that um but we just finally wrapped it uh, at the end of January and it's finally out. So as we were, as we were doing the documentary, I was kind of documenting it in the vlog slightly. That was, uh, that was something I definitely want to ask about. Cause I was like, Oh cool. He's shooting a documentary while like doing all this other work. That sounds like super intriguing on that. On the, on the flip side, is there a type of client that you at this point, um, would turn down? Um, whether that's like the creative or the type of business or things like that. There is sometimes that I have to turn things down and it's always for different reasons. Um, sometimes like the ethos of what the company wants to do just doesn't really align with like the type of work that I want to do. Sometimes it's just scheduling. Like sometimes they just need things by a certain date. And if I can't fully commit to being able to like give the best products that I know I'm capable mm -hmm. of giving by a certain date, sometimes it's like, thanks so much, but we just got to, you know, do something at a different date because I don't have time right now. Um, sometimes it's budgets. It's, it really depends on like a lot of different things. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. 
next i would love to jump into the vlog so i this is where i found you on the interwebs on tiktok is do you remember the when it vlog. was uh it was maybe over the summer um okay. it was definitely like a good while before like the one year mark because i remember seeing the, that video got it that's great that's awesome so i think over the summer and for those if you if you're listening to this or watching this like go search jack cook on tiktok and watch some of his vlogs they're intoxicating there's like fast paced <laughs> and well written and all that stuff so I, I would love if you could to walk us through like the process of like one like what made you decide to start doing vlogs and yeah. then how you actually like film them throughout the day for sure yeah so the uh actually this kind of relates back to what we were talking about at the very beginning when i first started to do this vlog it was because i was in that position of uh getting hired out by production companies and working for brands and clients but i kind of felt like my career was like a hamster wheel and like mm -hmm. i kind of just had to go from one job to another but it never really felt like there was an upward trajectory i didn't really feel like i had something for myself or like something that I was able to market. Like, you know, even if you're a production company, you're trying to like maybe market yourself on Instagram or, you know, through word of mouth with other clients. And I just felt like I didn't really have that. Um, and so I was actually complaining about it to my girlfriend one time when we were on vacation. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I feel like I'm kind of stuck in a loop and I need to find a way to get out of it. And so she s suggested to me that I needed to post videos on TikTok. She knew, she was like, you know that you have to post videos on TikTok. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to <laughs> like hop on trends and just make 15 second videos about whatever. Like it just doesn't seem interesting to me. And she was like, well, you know that that's what you have to do. So just kind of figure it out. And I was like, yeah. okay, you're right. What do I do? And then I thought back to the things I enjoyed watching when I was, 18 to 20 years old, which was a lot of like Casey Neistat stuff on YouTube and like that era of uh, YouTube and social media is like I was always really drawn to that. So I was like, you know, what if I take that idea and sort of put it into a vlog, but on TikTok and maybe it's only 30 to 60 seconds, but it kind of gives me that it kind of gives me a place where I can have like some creative control over projects mm -hmm. because another issue I had was when I was in that hamster wheel like a lot of times I didn't have the creative control because you know at that time I wasn't even really a director like I wasn't director right. on any project so it was hard for me to be involved with creative or have any control over certain things so this was one way that I could one begin to like market myself and the things that I was able to do and two just have a place where I had a creative outlet so yeah. I started I started doing that in October of 2021, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. October of 2021 is when I first uploaded them. And I just started doing them every day. And I knew I would be committed to doing it every single day, wouldn't miss a day. Um, and that was kind of how it began. Now when I shoot them every day, it's completely different than the way I used to. And it continues yeah. to change all the time. Um, but generally speaking... I'm shooting things all throughout the day. At the end of the day, I sit down, I drop all the clips onto my computer. I then do my voiceover. I cut the voiceover and then I go to sleep. And then I wake up in the morning and I edit the clips to the voiceover and then I put music on it and then I post it. So that's sort of like the flow. And then I, you know, go and start shooting the next day. So that's kind of the flow of like how I get them up every single day. Yeah, no, that that's that's really cool. I never, I didn't think I was like, oh, he probably just edits it all at the same time. It's cool that you do the voiceover at night, like right after the day, and then you do the editing afterwards. That's that's uh, it makes a lot of sense in my mind. <laughs> it's fresh when I do the voiceover that way, and also if I do the voiceover in the morning, I sound groggy, like I sound like I just, uh, you know, you have like yeah. that period of time when you first yeah. wake up where you, your voice sounds really deep and like you have like a morning voice. So mm -hmm. I didn't want that to. I actually did that a few times in the videos and I think like you can tell that I just woke up when you listen to yeah. them back. And so I was like, I want to avoid this. So I've been, I've just been doing it at night, like right before I go to sleep. I love that. Like, I think it's so interesting because I, I too like binged Casey Neistat and like all those guys, um, even before I lived in New York and I was like, this is so cool. Like, I love that. So it's cool to see that style and like that storytelling come 
um, to to TikTok um, with your videos. And there's I think there's some other people that do vlogs too. But it's it's exciting. Like what is um, on that same note? No, like what is your favorite part about the vlog? Is it is it just like the process or like having complete creative control? Um, what would you what would you say? Yeah, it's a, a mixed bag of things. I think like having something that I have creative control over is something I always wanted. So having that uh, is a big part of it for sure. But, you know, more recently, the fact that most of my work actually comes through that now, comes through that format. Yeah. Um, I don't usually when I get hit up to do jobs at this point, it's because somebody found me on TikTok for like my vlog, which is great. Um, and so having something that feels like there's momentum behind it as well mm -hmm. is really exciting because I've been making videos since I was 18, like I talked about, and you know, I'm 25 now. And this is the first time where I feel like I've started to build something that has upward momentum. Like when I was at yeah. Auburn, you know, the videos were doing great and I was learning a lot, but like there was always an end at Auburn where like I was going to graduate. And right. I was making YouTube videos for a while, but I was never really consistent with it. When I first moved out to LA, it was like I moved client to client, but I never really felt like it was moving upwards. And so this was the first thing that I've ever created where I feel like it's getting me new work that I can funnel back into that same format and it continues to grow on itself. And so it's really exciting for me to have something that finally feels like it's actually gaining momentum. Um, so now it's like, that's a part of the reason why I don't miss a day anymore is because I'm more m motivated than ever to do this style of video because it's the first thing in my career that's like really been working and has allowed me to like be at this house that I'm in and put food on the table. Like that's crazy to me and I've never had that and I've been searching for it for like seven years now. So there's so much motivation behind that of like, I'm going to do these every day. Like this is the greatest thing to happen to me, you know? Yeah, no, that's awesome. I feel like it's so rare for, for creators to like find that thing that they enjoy doing and also it's working for like helping them in their whole creative process and their, and their work and stuff. So kudos to you on that. That is like super, super cool. Um, another question about the vlog, are the Bevs sponsored or just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> or just Bevs something you enjoy? They're not sponsored. They're not sponsored. It's something that I really enjoy. I would obviously be open to a sponsorship one day would love to work more with the brand i think that would be the benefit if it was actually like a sponsored thing obviously at this point it's very organic like i actually just drink one of the drinks every day like i'm never going to change that habit but i would love to work with the brand a little bit more and create like more of a storyline there and more of like a direct connection to the brand so then the audience also kind of has that connection to the brand um so at this point, they're not sponsored. I've talked to them multiple times. I think that eventually we will work something out. But at this point, it's not its not something that currently aligns with like what they do as a business. They don't do a lot of like influencer marketing and they really don't do very much on TikTok either. So uh, it's not something that they're like really focused on right now. But maybe I could uh, maybe I could change their minds on that. I would yeah, love. Yeah, there you go. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast and you work, yeah. for that, what is the name of the brand? Sorry, I, I Guayaki. Guayaki. Hey, if yeah. you're listening, hook up my man Jack Cook. Okay, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, in that same vein, uh, who would be? Because this is always an interesting thing for someone that's like you're on social media, you're you're doing um, these videos for brands and things like that. Do you yeah. have a dream person you'd want to collaborate with? Um, you know, I have had some back and forths with uh, Tim Tuisano. Do you know him? Uh, you yeah. Okay, so I've followed him for quite a while. I found him like after I started doing my vlogs for maybe like 100 days or something, I found his and I was like, the, you know, these are fantastic. Like he does a great job of like narrating himself and providing like a silhouette to his life. So I've, we follow each other on TikTok and like we've messaged a few times. Like he sent me a Christmas card this year, but like we've never actually met yeah. in person. So uh, I would yeah, want yeah. to actually meet in person and like, you know, him be in a video and like me maybe be in one of his or something like that would be, it would be fun because we've had so much interaction just through the app, but just not in person yet. But next yeah. time we go to New York, I'm hoping I can make that happen because uh, that would be really fun. 
Totally. Yeah. He, I, I was going to mention that he's the other vlog person that, that I watch. So he's um, incredible. Like he's, a, he does impressive. a really, really great job with like storytelling through his voiceovers. I've always like looked up to his videos as a, a gold standard for that format. Yeah. It's, it's impressive. And I feel like he's, he, he's, he's in such a unique spot because he's just like, you know, working the, there's nothing wrong with nine to five. Well, like working the nine to five, and like he has a yep. family, like uh, but he also has like a bunch of tattoos and like a sneaker connection or collection. Sure. Um, just like a super cool dude. I love that. Absolutely, great. that's a great collaborator. I agree. That would be cool. Another question I had, something that I've pondered myself a lot, um, and I'm trying to get the this um across this other creators i'm meeting through this podcast is like has content creation in general in your case maybe the vlog or or just your video work how has that like affected your social life or mental health or relationships obviously I, I, your, your girlfriend um appears in the vlog from time to time um but i'd love to hear like how your work kind of interacts with the other parts of your life you know because I'm in LA, I think it's probably a bit of a special case because everyone here is like in the entertainment industry in some way, shape or form. So there's not very often where I'm interacting with people who aren't familiar with something like that. There are some people who like, you know, I, I grew up in Savannah, Georgia, and like I may go like back to Savannah and like they would not understand what like a TikTok vlog was. But like even yeah. if even if someone in L.A. doesn't know specifically my videos, if I said like, oh, I make vlogs on TikTok, like they would immediately like have an idea of what that looks like and kind of be like excited by it and be like, oh, well, I want to be in the vlog. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So it's like. Yeah almost an addition to my social life because either people know that I do them. So when they see me, they get excited and they want to be in the videos yeah. or they don't know. But then when I tell them they get excited and then they want to be in it. So it's actually like kind of an enhancement because uh, so many people are like really supportive of that out here because everybody's doing a lot of like creative endeavors. So when, when you see someone else that's doing something like most people are like super supportive of it. So I don't know that it would be like that everywhere in the world, but because I mm -hmm. live in LA, I think it's like a lot easier to be like, oh yeah, I do these like TikTok vlogs. Like, you know, do you want to be in one? Or like, I go to lunch with yeah. someone. Like, it's very easy to be like, oh yeah, let me get you on my vlog. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I, I mean, I feel like to your point, LA is probably a little bit more used to it. New York, you can kind of get away with all sorts of stuff. So like, I definitely feel <laughs> it as well. I mean, you go outside, you're never the... The, the, the weird person doing a video like, there's, all, there's so many people doing stuff so for um, sure yeah no that that's that's cool to hear i mean one of the cool things in my opinion about like content creation and, and social media especially tiktok is like how it can help widen your like area of friends and colleagues and people you know yeah and even like new people that i meet like people will maybe want to reach out to meet me because they saw the vlogs. So then when I do meet them, they're then excited to be in them. And then I like actually meet, like I actually have a good connection with that person, but then also, you know, they get to be in the videos, which is fun. They see the videos the next day. It's fun. Like it's mostly been uh, a very positive thing. And even with Mallory, like you mentioned our relationship, like she's super supportive of everything that I do. And she's also like a very creative person herself. So she's like, she also actually helps me a lot of times with the creative of them. Like if I feel like I'm stuck or I feel like I'm always, if I feel like I'm, if I feel like every day, every video like kind of is starting to feel like the same, I'll like always go to her and be like, you know, what can I do that like makes these feel different or makes them feel new. And like, she's always finding ways to push me to like make them better and like giving healthy suggestions for them because like she's a creative as well. So uh, honestly enhanced our relationship more too, because you know, we get to go and do fun things. Like we went to uh, one of the F1 races this year and like she got to kind of come with me. Um, so, you know, most of the stuff has been like really positive so far. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I feel like that's, something that is not talked about enough is like the i won't say like it's not like people get benefit from knowing you but it's like you get to share the wealth of doing cool things um as a content creator yeah 100 percent. and i hope that i can expand more like this year especially if i can like 
you know, do more fun things with my friends and like enhance them as like a part of the videos. Like that would be really fun. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I feel like that's a great goal too. Is like, that's something I think about. It's like, I want to do cool brand deals. So like I can do cool stuff with the people around me. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. All right. So I do like to do this one little bit on this podcast where I let the creator, the uh, entrepreneur do a little bragging. Cause I think there's like <clears throat> a, a, a feeling in the world where it's, there's so much things, so many things going on. Um, that it sometimes feels weird or wrong to brag about something cool you have going on, but I want to, you know, give you some space to talk about something cool that you have done recently or something you just want to kind of brag about. Okay. <laughs> Let me think. Um, I would say last year, um, around, I think it was the end of April, beginning of May, I got to go to Miami for one of the F1 races. And mm -hmm. the I was a videographer for Alpine that weekend. And the cool thing specifically about that was about a month before I even went to the race, I said in one of my vlogs, I said, because I've been watching the show, Drive to Survive. Have you heard of right. the show? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've been watching the show. I kind of became a fan of the show. And then because of that, I started watching the season and like, you know, people in the comments were like, oh, you got to finish the season. And like the season starts then the, like this dates, so, like you got to watch it. So I kind of kind of got more involved with the F1 community. And um, I said in one of the vlogs, I was like, they have a race in Miami in about a month. I would love to go there and be able to shoot the race with a team. Had no connection to the race, had no, you know, I know nothing about the F1 world. I have no connections in the F1 world. But I said it out loud in the vlog, having no connection to that. Yeah. And then was like, I'm going to try and figure out a way to make this happen. And then I, you know, talked about it a few more times about how I was sending emails. And I would check in the next week and be like, I'm sending more emails. I would love to make this F1 thing happen. And then I started getting some responses from teams. And so I was like a little bit like, okay, I got to see where this plays out before I really talk about it. But yeah. then eventually it got to the point where I was on the phone with Alpine and they were like, well, you know, we would love to have you. We would love for you to come out. So uh, we booked the plane tickets, like we signed a contract, like everything was good to go. And then I got to go back to the videos. Like I made a special, I made like a, a separate video to be like a month ago, I said that I would love to find a way to go to a race in May. And that was a month ago. Now fast forward, I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm on a plane to Miami. I'm going to be there with the team the whole weekend. Like, this is going to be so fun. I'm bringing you along with me. And then I actually got to go to Miami. I was with the team the whole time. I got to be in the garage. I was making my vlogs. I got to, like, show the car, show the drivers, like, the paddock. And it was all from, like, my first experience of seeing a race. Yeah. And I got to tell the story from before, you know, before it even happened. Like, but when it was still an idea in my head, I was still telling the story in the videos. And I think that was a really, like cool thing to document the process of because I kind of got to take anyone who was watching the videos at that time they got to like be along for that journey and I think that's like a really difficult thing to do uh just yeah. like in general with filmmaking and like especially like having the idea but not knowing if you're actually gonna be able to see it through but then it actually happening and like being in the paddock everybody got to see it but you also got to see it for from, from my point of view for my first time ever seeing it so you know i think like that whole sequence of events was like a really cool like milestone in my brain of like wow i can't really believe that that just happened and i just like said that it would happen like a month ago and like now it's coming true so that's yeah. my brag <laughs> that is an amazing brag that is awesome <laughs> that's super duper cool i mean like to and I, I think it you know plays on the fact that like and there's lots of people that have many different um, videos and books and things about like saying the things you want out loud and just putting it out there and then like doing something about it afterwards. So um, I just want to give a huge shout out to you for like putting it out there and like following through. That's super duper cool. And it sounds like it was an awesome experience. It was. And then, you know, from that, I got to meet more people involved in the F1 world. Um, I got to meet like people like Tony, I give a shout out to her and she's like connected me to all these people at uh, a company in LA called Race Service and like another uh, F1 photographer named Lydia and like I've gotten to do a lot more work 
in that world because I just had that idea one day, but I got to document like the whole process of like that happening. And so now it's like a, it's a whole new part of my life, but like the beginning of it is like captured on video and it's true. Yeah. Not me, not me talking about how it used to be an idea, but literally me saying out loud, like, here's the idea that I have. And then a month later, that idea coming to fruition. So I would love to be able to do more of that in the future too. It's really yeah. difficult. Like I can't believe yeah. that it <laughs> happened, you know, like a lot of things you say, sometimes it doesn't happen, but that one did. So I, I was, I was pretty proud of that one. Yeah, no, that's really, really cool. And on that note of like being able to look back, this is something I like, so I did, uh, I like dabbled in YouTube for a little bit and I did like vlogmas one year and I was like traveling through Europe with a friend and it was really cool and I find myself going back and looking at those videos a bunch and it's, at the time I was like is it worth like making these videos like right now but now I'm like thank god I have these because I can like go back to these memories like you, do sure? you find yourself going back and looking at your I mean you have a lot of vlogs but going yeah. back and looking at your vlogs and kind of like reminiscing a lot you know, every now and then I will. Sometimes I'll go back in and check certain time periods to see if I think the videos were good or not. <laughs> and I'll like kind of check myself of like, were these, you know, how was I doing at this time? And like, mm -hmm. it's kind of a good thing because most of the time when I look back, I think like these videos are not good. Like I would do these completely different. Um, so it's cool to feel like, you know, there's a bit of progress as far as like the technical aspect of making the videos goes. But as far as like reminiscing, you know, sometimes I'll go back to certain times like Miami or like when we went to Coachella last year, like that was a really fun like weekend that I had like all these videos from. But when I was making my year, when it, when I hit 365 days, I made like a year recap and I like voiced over, I voiced over like kind of the entire year and just from like doing the first vlog and having to kind of walk through all the things that happened just in one year. And like by the end of that year, I had like moved into a new house. Like I was kind of living a completely different life than I was when I started the vlog on day one. And like most of the reason that I was living a completely different life was because of the blog. So to go back and work all those moments and be like, all of that has led up to me being here where I am today. Like seeing all the videos like all together and trying to condense it into one video was like, that was the only time that was one of the big times where I was like, wow, like. I get to reminisce, really like watch all of these moments as they happen and be like, oh, I remember when that happened or like, oh, this was so fun or like, oh, I remember this time period and like something was about to happen that I didn't know was going to happen, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I've wow. also thought about like, you know, I have every day of my life for the past almost 500 days documented in a 60 second, you know, short video format. Like when I'm like, 55 years old and I can like what was I doing in 2022 on March 2nd and yeah. like what did I have for lunch like I could answer that question and go back to like that specific day so I also think about like 25 years from now how valuable like this content library will be for me yeah no that's really cool I feel like it's such a unique like people do journaling and stuff but they have like a visual visual representation of of a slice of your life from certain uh, all the days uh, within it is something that's honestly really really cool and i just want to again yeah. shout out to you for like consistency yeah well done <laughs> consistency is that if you're looking to be like if you want to be a creator i think the there's a lot of things that you have to be good at in order to like make a career out of being a creator and i think people learn what those things are at different times i think consistency was the thing that I learned last and was mm. actually like the most important like element that I was missing. I think some people might start out and be super consistent. And there might've been things that I started out with that they might not figure out for two years. But if you are looking to be a creator, consistency is like such a key factor in being able to build towards something that can like blossom into a career. Like if you want to have any kind of career in this like new new world of social media consistency is so so important cannot stress it enough i love that and honestly the perfect segue because i love to end um these interviews with three actionable tips for people that kind of want to 
if they've heard this video, this interview and they're like inspired, they're like, Oh, Jack Cook's pretty cool. I want to do something like that. Um, yeah. uh, just three tips and I'll say consistency is one. So if you have two other tips, doesn't have to be super long, could be super short, but just right. two things that people that have been inspired by hearing from you, um, and they're interested in maybe doing what you're doing. What would you, what would you tell them? I would say one, you have to have self-awareness of like what you are specifically passionate about. Like, knowing it took me a long time to realize the style of videos that I'm doing now, these vlogs and like uh, social media style videos, like documentary going to like events and being able to capture those things and sort of the memory of it all. And then recapping it like in my videos, that's the thing that I really love the most about filmmaking. And like, that's the thing mm -hmm. that I love doing. It took me a long time to realize that. So finding out, you know, it takes a long time, but finding out what you're actually passionate about, if it's filmmaking or making music or painting or whatever it is, but in that specific medium, what's the thing that makes you really excited to go do it? Like me making the vlogs makes me excited every day to go do it. And that, that passion in turn makes me want to make them better every day, which I hopefully think makes the videos better every day. And then like that actually turns into a career. So self-awareness um, and finding out what it is that you're really passionate about if it's filmmaking or whatever the thing is. And then the other thing that I would say is, especially if you're starting out your career, you will engage with a lot of people that have an idea of what your potential is. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand what the potential that you see yourself having. And a lot of times those people end up putting you in a box and it's not their fault, like people just naturally do that sometimes. But I think, especially if you're starting out, you cannot let people dictate what your potential could be because you're worth so much more than anything. You're worth so much more than what those people think that you could be. And if you don't let those people get you down and put you in a box, eventually you get to a point where you actually do reach your full potential, which was far more than what that person really thought that you could ever do. And you'll be so much happier that you didn't let them tear you down and put you into that box because you have so much more to offer. So don't let people get you down. Don't let them put you in a box because I had a lot of people try to do that to me. And mm -hmm. I always told myself, like, I'm not going to let these people put me in a box. They're not going to tell me what to do. I have a lot more to offer and I know it. And it's really hard sometimes because a lot of those people, sometimes you look up to them. Sometimes they're in positions of power. Sometimes they're in positions of influence or they're people that are further along in their career and they think of you in only a certain way, but you can't let them, you can't let yourself begin to think about yourself the way that they think about you. You have to remember who you are, remember what your potential is and go chase after it. That was beautiful. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm like funny. amped up. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Like, don't put people, <laughs> don't put anyone in a box anymore. I love it. Um, Jack, this has been really, really great. That advice I think is super stellar. Um, I feel like people really enjoy hearing that. And I just want to say again, uh, thanks for taking the time to chat for a while. This has been really cool. Again, love your vlogs. Can't wait to see more and to see all the cool things you put out into the world. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This was this was really fun. We'll have to do it again. Thank you so much for listening to episode two of the Pursuit of Creativity podcast. If you enjoyed Jack's story and got some value from this episode, be sure to leave a review, share it with a friend, or leave a rating. It definitely helps us out a lot. For more insight, be sure to check out the Believe Divergent Instagram along with BelieveDivergent.com. I'm your host, Ike Ajvan. Thank you for listening to this episode once again. I really appreciate you. Um, and as usual, Stay optimistic. Better days are coming.